There he is. There you go. The man, the legend. This wheel was the basically it was the second thing I ever made out of carbon fiber. Actually, the first thing I made was the saddle, and then I made this wheel. We're going to talk about uh, carbon wheels, right? Now, I actually yeah. have some carbon wheels at home. I've got some Carbona carbon wheels, yeah. and I've got a disc, and I've got uh, a fr like a deep dish 50 mil rims. Yeah. Before we get your opinion on what your thoughts are on those wheels, what are some of the pitfalls uh, to buying cheap wheels overseas in Asian countries? Well, the thing is, you don't know what you're getting. That's, that's the fundamental thing. So it's like... Um, like medicines or whatever, you know, you can buy, would you, you know, would you get a medicine which you didn't know what the ingredients were, you know? Um, so you don't know what grade carbon they're using, you don't know what resin they're using, you don't know the layups, you don't know all these things. So they might be fine, they might not be, but you don't know. And, you, and they might go from one different um, supplier to another supplier. Um, and so someone might buy a good one, someone might buy a bad one. You, you, you just don't know. So that's, that's the big thing with the, with the unbranded stuff. It's, it's a lottery, you know. So I did a thing a while ago on cycling tips where Wade contacted me and wanted to know about this stuff. And um, it was probably three, three years, four years ago, something like that. And that was, that was the thing. You, you don't know what you're getting. You, you might get a good one. And we get stuff come through all the time, you know. And people go, oh, can you check this out? And some of it's good, some of it's not good, you know. Um, there's that variability. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the big unknown with the, uh, the unbranded stuff. You just don't know what you're getting. So I suppose uh, in real terms, like if I was riding, really I suppose what I'm asking is if I'm out on the road and I'm going down the Dandenong Hills yeah. with, you know, Taiwanese uh, wheel set, what have I got to be worried about? What can happen? Well, you know, you could... Um, you could overheat the rim. I mean, you can get that on brand name stuff as well. So, I mean, there's well, plenty of rims over here, which I can show you, that they've, the rim braking surface is overheated. So what happens is the resin has got... Um, there's probably the resin called the TG, which is the glass transition temperature. It's when the resin starts going soft. So when you're braking, you can see temperatures of 250 degrees Celsius plus on a, on a descent when you're braking. Now, most of these resins typically can only take, at the higher end, about 180 degrees. So once you start going above that, that temperature zone, the resin starts getting soft. Yeah. Now, when the resin starts getting soft, it can't support the load. And you've also got this other thing where you've got a tube and with air in it, and what happens is, when, it, when you heat up air, what happens to it? It expands. And so you've got 100, 120 psi in your tube, and then when you're heating up, the pressure's increasing because the air's trying to expand, and the resin's going soft at the same time. So it blows the rim out, and then you can basically lose control. Tire, tire comes off the rim, you, you lost control of the bike. Yeah. You know? So if that happens on the front wheel, which, you know, let's say most of the braking happens on the front. Yeah. Um, that's where you get the biggest braking effect. So you're going to get the most temperature, the most energy going into that front wheel. And you lose control of the front wheel. It's, yeah, you're on the ground. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the thing. You know, these, the deep, deep carbon clinches, um, you know, they're, they're all the rage. Everyone loves them. Um, personally, I, I hate them. I've never used them. I, I think they're dangerous. Um, you know, for the sort of riding that I do, yeah, I, I wouldn't use them. So, um, you know, if you're just rolling along the flat, yeah, they're okay. Um, you know, there's some braking techniques in it as well. But, you know, we get a lot, a lot of ones coming where guys have had a weekend up at Bright um, riding climbs and stuff like that, and they come back and, oh, I've noticed my, my wheels a bit, a bit funny, or it's not braking right, and have a look at it, and it's the braking surfaces all warped because what I've explained, it's just happened. So the resin's overheated, and it's just splayed out. So, yeah, I mean, I can show you some examples of that. So, so you're saying that it doesn't matter whether they're um, Taiwanese brands or even big name brands. This can happen. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So the, um, I mean, I've seen it happen to, to pretty much all the brands. Um, the best. The best for that actually appears to be Zip. 
Um, they seem to have the highest temperature rating. And, and uh, when I've spoken to when I've spoken to the Zip guys over the pa- in, you know, in the past, they've said, "Oh, we're using a, we're using a special resin, which is like a defence category resin, which is a high temperature resin." Um, and in independent testing, like you know, we've had a, a lab um, on another project that I've been working on with wheels do this TG test on a whole bunch of different wheels and, and see you know, whose resin is, is the best, basically, in their, in their wheels. And you know, the zips and the lightweights were, were right up the top of that. Um, but it's, it's still about 180 degrees. Are you sponsored by Zip or Lightweight? <laughs> no, not, not at all. Not at all. I, 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 you know, I, I, just, I just call it as it is. And, that, you know, and so, um, so even though, I mean, their, their temperatures are at, at, the, at the higher end. The downside to that is these higher temperature resins are more brittle, right? So, you know, that makes like a, a zip rim can be more fragile. So you're more likely to break it in an impact because it's more fragile, but you're less likely to cook it on your braking. You know, so the, the thing, it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. So, you know, that's the thing with these, you know, this design, and that's why I'm not a fan of, of carbon clinches because I think it's actually, it's a poor design. It's, it, it's an aluminium design. They've gone, okay, everyone likes these aluminium wheels, but we want deeper wheels and, oh, let's make it all carbon and, you know, it'll, yeah, it'll be good, but it's, it's not a good design. So, like in the aircraft game, you call that black aluminium where you just basically replicate an aluminium design out of carbon and you're not, you're not actually designing it for carbon. You're designing it, it's, it's an aluminium design and you go, oh, we use carbon because carbon's a better material and away we go. But it doesn't work like that. You know, you need to optimise designs for the materials that you're working with. Yeah, right. So when you say uh, carbon clinches, are you, you know, I mean, are you going to put uh, singles in that category as well? No, singles, singles are different in the, the way the because the, the, the single contains the pressure, you don't have this double action of the resin going soft and the pressure increasing. So the, the single itself contains the pressure, so that's an independent system. You've also got the structure of, of, a, of a tubular rim is such that you've got more carbon right in that, in that spot where the braking is, which can, which can help dissipate that energy. But on, on, a, on a clincher rim, you've just got a sidewall um, of, of, of the rim and so you just you don't have you don't have the thermal mass you, you, you know to get rid of that heat you know it's, it's, it's just going to be trapped in that spot so you know the tubulars don't have anywhere near the problems um, for, for a number of uh, you know those reasons so um, even though the braking temperatures can be can be just as hot just the forces are different um, yeah, you, you can get away with it. You can get away with it. But, you know, on, on one of the projects, uh, a rim project I was working on some time ago, um, we noticed just by changing the fibre angle at the braking surface, you can, you can have a significant effect on the temperature in that spot and how the temperature basically gets drawn away from that braking surface. So, you know, you want to dissipate that heat into the rest of the structure, and the, it, because it's going through through the air, um, that's cooling. You know, so it, 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 you, you want to transfer that area over a large surface area. So, so the worst wheel you can use if you're doing descending is basically a, a carbon clincher, which has got a shallow a shallow depth, which is your typical climbing wheel. So, so yeah, great for climbing because it's really light and it does all these things for climbing, but you don't want to descend on it because it'll, you know, it's a good chance it'll fail. So. Whoa. So when it fails, what actually happens? So the sidewall of the rim blows, blows out from the tyre and then the tyre, the, like the bead of the tyre comes off the rim, the, the tube will then suddenly will, will just blow. You know, that'll fail suddenly because it's, it, it's not contained by the tyre casing anymore. So the, the, the tube fails, so you've got sudden, um, you know, basically explosive decompression of the, of the tyre, um, and then you've got no grip. So you, you're basically on, a, on a, a thin bit of carbon rim on the road. Now, it doesn't grip very well, you know. So, yeah, you've got your tyre 
to provide the grit. So, yeah. yeah. So there you have it, good humans. If you are going to buy carbon wheels, make sure you don't buy clinches. <laughs> In a nutshell. What were you going to say, Shane? One question I have is carbon wheel repair. We see people with broken carbon rims. Can you repair them? And is the braking surface compromised? It depends. You know, so there's no absolute yes, there's no absolute no. It, it depends on where the location is of the damage, um, the extent of the damage, the type of damage, all these other factors. So, um, you know, it's a real case by case. So we get rims coming in all the time. And look, I'd, I'd probably say... 50% are repairable and, and the others are. And so um, it does also depend on, on the use of the wheel. So for instance, you know, if you've got um, you know, a, deep, a deep carbon time trial wheel, you know, you could re you'd repair that because you know, you're not really breaking that much on the time trial anyway, right? A disc wheel. A lot of us put holes in our disc wheels. Oh, well, disc wheels good. are a big one as well. That We throw them around in the car and they get dinged. Yeah. So the repairs on those are quite oh, good. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're, there's no issues with repairing the side of a disc wheel um, because you've got so much area, so much carbon. Like, they're, they're, like they're so over-designed. Um, yeah, that, that's not, not an issue. But, I mean, I've got a... I've got a, a, a and a Zip 808 time trial front wheel, which I've repaired. So now we're gonna we're gonna look at a couple of wheels that uh, Rolls repaired, and basically what to expect, and then we'll find out. Well, does a repair compromise the wheel, or does it strengthen it? So this is a repair, a bit of side damage on the on the lightweight. Um, now these are built um, light, obviously they're lightweights. <laughs> so. Um, you know, they're quite fragile on the side. There's, there's typically only one ply of carbon over a foam core. So, you know, we've got plenty of damaged lightweights um, that we've deconstructed, so we know exactly how they're made. Um, yeah, and so we can basically rebuild it to be back the same as what it was, you know, so it's... As strong or, or stronger? Um, no, about the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, the, the key with any repair is to get it back to the way it was, you know, so you don't, you, you don't necessarily want it stronger, um, you know, it's like you, you can get problems if it's, if it's stronger, stiffer, yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. that's the sort of thing that can happen with the temperature distortion, so you can see that the, like the, the sidewall of the rim is just bowed out, um, yeah, so, so I, and did that fail, did that, yeah, yeah, so, um, did the guy have a serious crash? I can't remember on this guy. Um, I've had so many come in. Some of them have had serious crashes, some haven't. So, um, yeah, I can't remember this particular one. It was quite some time ago. So. But so you're saying that you've had a lot of these come in. That's really interesting that it's not just a couple, it's a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of the times, basically, um, I get inquiries, people ring up, oh, I found this um, bit of a funny thing on my braking surface. And uh, so I ask, oh, well, what is it? What wheel is it? Oh, blah, 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 you know, carbon clincher. And I go, there's nothing we can do. So once the resin's been overheated, um, it's been chemically damaged. So there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's a scrapper, it's in the bin. So um, yeah, the, the, the resin's just gone. So, you know, it's been taken to too high a temperature for a period of time. It's chemically, it's no longer doing what it's meant to be doing. Is, it, is there a relationship between brake pads and these carbon wheels? I mean, is that what's causing these problems? No, no it's, it, can, it can contribute to it. Um, different brake pads have different effects on, 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 on the braking, but at the end of the day, you've got energy to dissipate. And so if you're doing, if you're doing 40K an hour down a hill, it's typically, um, what is it, about 10,000 joules? So, to go to zero, from 40k an hour to, to zero, you've got to dissipate that amount of energy. Um, that's a lot of energy. That is, a, that is you know, a staggering amount of energy. So um, you've got to get rid of that energy. So that's, that's, what a break is, that's what a break's doing. A break is basically an energy uh, dissipation device. So it's converting kinetic energy of you moving yeah. into heat. Yeah. And so you need to disperse that, yeah. that heat. Yeah. 
So is that why we see a dropped braking surface on a lot of carbon rims? And you have to, I've, I've had carbon rims myself where I've had to actually change the brake pads to be a little lower, there's a braking track. Yep. Is that for heat dissipation? That's right, so, so what they've done, they, like if you use this rim as an example, instead of having the braking surface right at the edge of the rim, where it's not very structurally sound, um, well, you know, you basically, you've got an open section. By moving the braking surface further down, you're at the, at the T piece um, of the rim design. And so it's, it's more like then a tubular rim yeah. in that you've got more material in there to, to dissipate that heat energy. Right. So, you know, so it's, it's, it's a clever way around around this, this problem so yeah yeah and for disc wheels that'd be a godsend for carbon rims so you wouldn't have the you'd have the i guess the what would you call it the ease of use of a clincher and be able to change your tires but you won't have the heat problems on the rim so disc wheels or disc brakes on a carbon clincher would be the way to go well i think you know that's why there's this big push in 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 the industry to go to these to, to disc brakes um, because it takes all the braking aspects away from the rim, and so you can build you can build a lighter rim um, without any of these heat effects. And so you, you know, I, I think it's the industry admitting that they've got it wrong with carbon clinches, and but everybody still wants carbon rims. So it's like, oh, how can we how can we get it to the people? Um, okay, we'll come up with another braking device. Um, and so, I mean, disc brakes, I don't know if you've used disc brakes, um, but yeah, they're, they're really nice to use. Um, you know, they modulate really well, because it's specifically designed as a brake. You know, so it's not compromised as a, as a rim surface, um, it's designed specifically as a brake, you know. So, um, there's, you know, there are a lot of advantages to disc brakes. Um, yeah, they are a little bit heavier. I mean, I remember when, when disc brakes came into mountain bikes, you know, like, first we had cantilever brakes, and then, then, you know, the Shimano introduced the V-brakes, which, oh, these are incredible V-brakes, you know, and it was just like, yeah, and then you get a disc, and it's just like, you never, ever go back to a rim brake, You're not in a million years. Like, the modulation and the consistency, it's like, um, I mean, I remember, like, years ago when I was living in Canberra, and the, uh, I'd been riding the mountain bike a lot, and, um, and then I started, I, I, I jumped on the roadie again. I hadn't been on the roadie for about a month or something like that. And jumped on the roadie and, uh, and it was wet. And I come into this corner and go through a bit of break and it was just like, oh, <laughs> it's, not <laughs> it's not like, you know, because that's the thing with the disc brake, you come into a, into a wet corner, you know exactly how much break you're going to get every time. Whereas, yeah, with a rim brake, it's just like a bit of a lottery, you know. It's like, how much am I going to get this time? And, um, yeah, am I going to lock up or am I going to get nothing, you know? And it could be anything in between. Um, whereas a disc brake, you get that, that consistency. So they are, they are nice, yeah, they are nice. All right, Legends, so we will continue the rest of the chat with regards to disc brakes tomorrow. And we're also going to cover a few other things in terms of wheel tension and a bit more banter with Raul. This video was very long, it was close to an hour, so I decided to break it into two parts. So part two will be tomorrow. Until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow.